I'm in the sweet little village of Wickford, and I'm going to take you to see one of my favorite homes in this town. And this is about 20 or so minutes from Newport. Very quiet little town, very sweet. Shops, beautiful old homes to see. I highly recommend taking a little side trip if you come down this way. In today's video, we're going to visit a couple quaint and charming villages in Rhode Island and Massachusetts. And then we're gonna be baking something in the kitchen and we're gonna be checking on the sugar shack that's getting painted. A nice little update of what happened during the week. And this is a shorter video because we were enjoying 4th of July festivities for a couple of days. Enjoy. All right, so this is one of my favorite homes. I found it once walking around. Isn't she beautiful? I was told by a neighbor who was walking by that this fence is made of mahogany. And I have to tell you, I have seen this home in all four seasons and it does not disappoint. This home has had many, many owners over the years, including a Benjamin Davis. And trust me, I did research. We did not find a relation, but it was also owned by the founder and president of the Cross Pen Company. Curious minds want to know, or at least one. For some front of the home inspiration, check out window boxes, urns, and plants in front of some of these homes. I'll also add, you can get some color inspiration as well. Some of these homes have beautiful combinations. Did you know there was a New England in Australia? There is. And this is Australia's white flag. There's also a version with blue and white stars. Remember I was talking about color combinations? Check this one out. And look at those beautiful 12 over 12 windows. And for those who don't know what that means, it's 12 panes of glass over 12 panes of glass. Trust me, I wanted to knock on this door just to see if a merchant opened it up. What can I buy today? This one really grabbed my attention. Simple yet elegant details. Let's go check out a store I saw as I was heading into town. I saw a kitchen store on my drive in. That's where I'm heading. Flatfish Cottage. Charming and whimsical goods. I don't think they're open. Darn. 12 to 5. Oh, I see a shop for Serendipity. Oh yes, we have plenty of time. I spied this as I was walking towards the store. Sweet Marie's Tea Cottage. But unfortunately, they were closed. Just a little reminder, if you are needing something and ready to go shopping, please support your small local businesses. They would truly appreciate it.
Another thing I do like here is a lot of the homeowners are planting between the sidewalk and the road. So you have this beautiful path between the road and their house. Beautiful. It's time to head out and continue on. Now this decorative feature is called a figurehead and they were carved and placed on the front of ships and it embodied the spirit of the ship. It was supposed to protect the crew and also safeguard them on their homeward journeys from harsh seas. All right, guys, heading to my parking spot and gonna hit the road. I'm now gonna head towards the town of Smithfield. I am curious to see how much the car smells. It's been sitting in the sun. It's close to 90 degrees right now, but there's a beautiful breeze out here, so I don't feel like it's too hot. I'm in East Greenwich or Greenwich. I don't know how this town says it. It's different for every area, believe it or not. But I saw a sign, Historic Greenwich, I'm gonna say, because that's how it's said for Connecticut. But I will ask a business owner how it's said here. And when I saw the shop driving by, I'm like, it has to be open for me, please. When I had my retail stores, I used to have a lot of outdoor visuals and that's what catches attention. And this one certainly caught my eye. Unfortunately, they're not open, but this is great marketing. Grabbed my attention. It's called the Green Door. Go figure. I have mentioned many a times I deal with severe anxiety, especially when it comes to driving on highways. So on the way home, I made it a point to actually try to do as many back roads as possible and made my way towards Grafton, Mass, because this is a town that Ben and I looked at. We used to love eating at the inn. And then we had a couple houses right around this common that we seriously looked at, but we lost out on the bids. So I'm just going to check out some of the shops that might be open and give my legs a rest. And blood pressure drop. Let's buy an antique shop. I think I have to head over there first. And I did look where I wanted to go is closed, but it looks like there's a tavern here. I might be able to get some lunch. All food places are closed except for an ice cream shop. Care to guess what I get for lunch? Okay, this will help my anxiety. Now I'm gonna take a nice slow ride home. Got about another, almost two hours to go.
I'm back home and back in the kitchen. I am getting ready to make a spinach pie. And right now I have three cups of onions that I'm sauteing. I'm about ready to add my salt and pepper. Looks like I can shut this off now. Over here, let's see, I've got my ingredients out. I have three 10 ounce frozen packages of spinach. I still have to squeeze out all of the excess water as much as possible. I have a pound of feta, a, let's see, I have a half a cup of, what is this? Half a cup of Parmesan. I have a half a cup of dry, plain breadcrumbs. I have a stick of butter melted, that's for the filo dough. Filo dough, filo dough. I have, let's see here, this is two teaspoons salt, two teaspoons of nutmeg. I have a half a cup of pine nuts and one and a half teaspoons of pepper. And I have six eggs that I've beaten up. And once I add my salt and pepper to the spinach, I'm going to then get rid of this water, squeeze it out as much as possible, like I said. And I'll be mixing in the eggs and some of the other ingredients here. Now it looks like a lot of salt, but we have a large batch that will be going into this pie. I'm trying to disperse it as well as possible. Okay, so now I'm going to let this cool down a bit while I do the next step. I'm buttering my oven safe pan. If you don't have an oven safe pan, you could use another type of casserole dish if you'd like. So this isn't gonna be pretty, I'm pretty sure, but I'm just gonna now fold them over. This well, These are all buttered. And I'll probably do a little bit more of a light buttering here because I have some extra butter. Why not? <laughs> yeah, and the six inch is supposed to be kind of like domed and so I have a lot of extra dough here the way I did it. All right, I'm stopping. I'm gonna put this in the oven and cook it for how long? One hour. Well, that's not showing well because of the lighting. It looks delicious. I can't wait to try this. Now we have to let it cool down a bit. I'm actually leaving the pot holder on here just so I remember that that's hot. Finally, something will be made with the currants we have here on the property. Get some currants here that Shannon is going to pick and make something at home. I have never found the time for the three years I've seen them here. If I get my jar of jelly back in time, I will edit it into this video, but my daughter made what she said is a very delicious jelly and I cannot wait to try it. So much for trying to sleep in a bit later than usual. Willow thinks her cute stare and her tail wagon will get me up. Nope. Okay, that works. I'm up. Happy 4th of July, kindred spirits. We just finished red, white, and blue pancakes. White chocolate, raspberry, and blueberry pancakes. And I started to make a little display here on the table just for fun. I went to grab a red book off of our library shelf ended up being Henry VIII. I put it down and quickly realized that his daughter 
is right there. Can you imagine what they'd be thinking right now? We're celebrating Independence Day. Mm -hmm. Some may ask why we are still flying the Grand Union flag on Independence Day. Well, Ben and I still like to pay homage to our ancestors. We have five generations that were British before our country became our country. While I was baking, Ben decided to head out early in the morning and start painting the sugar shack that he had sanded the previous week. I am getting ready to go see how much Ben has got done on the sugar shack. I have my little red, white, and blue dress on for 4th of July. I'll be changing out of it later for a cookout we're going to. But oh, And we have some Fredericks along the way. I don't need breadcrumbs to find them. I just follow Willow's toys. I figured I'd come out before I start the spinach. Yeah, I gotta clean some of the ferns. It's taking over the tree. Back into the kitchen I go. I made another spinach pie for the 4th of July party, but this is what happened. I was getting ready to make a larger pan of the spinach pie, and true to nature, true to my style, since I didn't put things in bowls and spread it out, I forgot to put my breadcrumbs in. So I'm going to try to surgically open this up in fourths. I don't know if I can fold it back and I don't know. I don't know guys. I'm just gonna see how this goes. If it doesn't work, it looks like I'm not bringing a spinach pie to the 4th of July party. So this is my life. I'm gonna try to stir it in slowly. I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna add a little at a time and mix it in. This is cray cray, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And I think it's gonna work fine now that I'm seeing what's happening. Problem diverted. I'm gonna add a little bit more and we'll be all set. It was only half a cup that I was missing, so I'm just gonna keep sprinkling it in and mixing it. And we'll be good. We'll be good. I'm glad I remembered it at this stage. I was able to fold back the, the phyllo dough. All right, awesome. I did butter another piece of phyllo dough and put it on top to cover the seam, but it just flaked off and it came out perfect and everybody loved it. So this recipe is a hit. When I'm returning home to our little village, especially on holidays, I feel like I'm entering a Hallmark movie. While I'm thinking about red, white, and blue, it's reminding me that I did find out the blue paint color at the room that I stayed in at the Chandler in the Williamsburg room. I'm going to put the paint color and even some of the fabrics on my blog right now. And if you haven't seen that video, I will also link that video below and on my blog for those who'd like to watch it. I got my jar of currant jelly and look at this color and it was so good. Little combination, I would say, of maybe cranberry with a little tartness, and then maybe sweet, like strawberry. It's hard to say what it tastes like. Well, who needs Google when you have kindred spirits? I got several people telling me I had to turn this to get finer grounds, and it worked. Thank you, kindred spirits. You're my heroes.